elements of columns. A typical columns can be subjected to moment and axial load. When the axial load is relatively high, exceeding the capacity of the column, compression failure can occur. When a column is subjected to high bending moment, which result in tensions in the column sections, tension failure can occur. This table shows the typical characteristic which the columns are more likely to fail in tensions or in compressions. Also, there is a state that both tensile and compression failure happens at the same time in the column. This is known as the balance conditions. And this marks the boundary conditions for the tensions or the compression failure. A column can fail when the steel bar yields either in tensions or compressions, as well as the concrete crush. The crushing of the concrete are normally due to the compressions. Let us look into the characteristic of the columns which give a idea of potential failure of the columns. First, we look at the moment to axial load ratio. If this ratio is relatively high, that means the columns is undergoing high degree of moment. This encourages the bending of the moment, development of the tensile strength in the steel, and the columns is likely to undergo tension failure. If the ratio is small, that means the moment is small while the axial load is high. This leads to a condition that columns undergoing high compression load but low bending moment. Therefore, the compression failure can happen. In terms of the eccentricity of the load, large eccentricity acting on the column leads to a high moment acting on the column. This encourages tensile failure. In terms of the strength, the strength in the tensile steel exceeds the yielding strength of a steel that gives the tensile failure. As for the compressions, the strength of the steel in compressions exceeded the strength limit, which is the U strength. Compression failure can happen. In terms of the neutral axis, when the X neutral axis is less than the neutral axis balance, tensile failure may happen. When it is equal to the balanced neutral axis, the columns are in the balanced state. When it exceeds the balanced neutral axis, compression failure happens. In terms of the axial load, if the load exceeded balanced axial load, compression failure occur. While when it is less than that, tension failure occur. As for the moment failure, both the tensions and compression conditions will have the moment in the columns which is less than the moment balance. This can be observed from the typical axial load versus moment curve. This curve is very identical to the design charts of the columns, which outline the relationship between the axial load divided by BHFCK and also the M divided by BH square FCK. In this case, we are looking at the relationship between axial load and the bending moment. From the curve here, the balance point happens here. The respective axial load will be the axial load at the balance conditions, while the moment here is known as the moment's balance. At any relations between the axial load and the moment, these regions 
represent the likelihood of enduring compression failure while this region is tension failure. What you see from the curve here for the Asia loops larger than N balance, compression failure occur as indicated here. When the Asia loop is less than N balance, the column is likely to fail in tension. In terms of the moments, N balance will represent the largest moment that can be carried by a column. Both tensions and the compression regions will have the moment less than the N balance. What you will see here, there is a point R. It represents the starting of the changes of the slope of the curve. It normally happens when the compression steel has reached the strength limit of the steel undergoing yielding.